Hi, welcome to this quick walkthrough of the Photographer's Ephemeris on Android. We're running the app on a Google Galaxy Nexus phone today. <clears throat> We've started things up here in Boulder, Colorado. And what I'll do, I'll give you a quick tour of the main features. And the way we'll cover most of them is by means of planning a notional photography trip back to the UK, where I'm from, to the Lake District. Before we do that, just a, a, some brief orientation, if you haven't seen the app before. It's centered around a map, so pretty much all of the data that's presented here at the bottom of the screen relates to how the map is set up. And everything hinges off the red pin, the primary pin that sits there in the middle of the screen. So we can navigate around the map, we can pan, we can zoom, we can pick up that pin, drag it and drop it, we can recenter it, and so forth. You get the idea. Um, the current date that we're looking at the data for is here at the top of the screen. We've got the elevation above sea level, the current coordinates. Green status indicator to say that the app has received all the data it needs to do the calculations. And that's primarily the time zone or the elevation above sea level. Um, and just there you'll see a compass that shows our current bearing. That's the current heading for the device as pointing uh, to the top here. And you can toggle that on and off. Um, easier to see there on darker background. So. Let's, uh, before we dig into the data down here, let's think about the trip that we're going to make. Let's imagine we're sat here in November, we're looking forward to a spring visit to the UK, and we're going to go to the Lake District. I've got a particular location in mind. Here on the menu, I'm going to search for it, and it's a place called Great Langdale. I click search, and off we go, and we land here in the UK. Let's just zoom out so you can get your, your bearings a bit more. There we go. So you can see that's the uh, northwest of the UK. It's um, a hilly, mountainous part of England, as far as mountains go in England. They only go up to 3,200 feet above sea level, and uh, but still a very spectacular place if you haven't been there. And Great Langdale is, is a valley, I suspect, although I'm not a geologist, a, a glacial valley, that runs this curve here where you see the green terrain at the at the valley base where there's farming and so forth surrounded by a lot of hills or fells as they're called in, in that part of the world um, we're not going to gather in November so the other thing we need to do to get set up is to set the date so let's do that here on the menu we click menu set date and we'll go to let's say April 2013 April of next year there we go and we can see that on that date, um, these lines have moved. Now, what are the lines? The lines are um, the direction of sunrise, sunset, moonrise, and moonset. If I advance one day using these buttons just below uh, the map there, this gives us a, a better setup. Um, I'll tell you why in a moment. The yellowish orange line there is the direction of sunrise coming from the east, but slightly northeast. Uh, orange is sunset, the light blue is moonrise, the dark blue is moonset. The reason I changed the date there, you'll see that on the previous date, the direction of the moonrise and the sunrise is almost identical, so it was a bit hard to see those lines just to, to explain what was going on. So let's imagine that we're going to be there that week of April 11th of next year. Uh, if, if you read about the valley at all, you'll know that there's a um, good walking along here, there's some good pubs along the way and there are some trails, some very good walking trails and hikes that you can do that rise up, climb out over the end here and you can get all the way over to Scarfell Pike which is the highest point in England at, uh, that's the 3200 feet I mentioned earlier um, but let's imagine we're, we'd like to plan a sunrise shot uh, we don't want to get up too early, so we're going to be camping, let's say, down here in the valley. And we'd like to shoot the sun striking these mountains here at the end. We can test whether April is a good time of year to be there or not. So what I'm going to do is pick up the pin. There we go. I can't quite see what I'm doing here from the side with the, with the camera, but there we go. Drop it up there on the mountain top. So I'll zoom in here just a little to see, see if we're roughly on the right place. And we are. You can see there's down towards the valley floor, here's the rocky higher elevation area and what that shows us is that if we were standing somewhere down here in the valley we could be looking up towards the mountains at the end here and the sun is rising pretty much up the valley so all of this land in front of us is likely to catch the morning light which is 
potentially one of the things we'd like to see for a, a nice a nice morning sunrise uh, photograph. Um, let's see what time would we need to get up. Well, down here you have the time of sunrise at 6.20 a.m. It also gives you the bearing, um, or what we tend to call the azimuth, um, which is the, the bearing from true north to the direction of where the sun will rise on the, on the horizon. And that's 74.4 degrees. You can see the sun doesn't set until 8.07 in the evening. And then down below we've got the moon rise, moon set. The moon is rising um, pretty much 10 minutes after sunrise. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's a new moon. Um, which is why those lines are so close and why the uh, the times are so close. And then down below you can see indeed it says waxing crescent 0 0.03 or 0.3% and that is the fraction of the moon's disk that is illuminated. Um, you'll see that increase as we go towards full moon and decrease as you go back towards new moon. So, so far so good. I think the time of year looks good, the location looks good. One thing that you might think about, and it's easy to see when we zoom out, is you see the green of the valley and you see the brown of the hilltops and you can see here that the sun has to rise above some other hills. How do we know that those other hills won't block sunrise for our current location? Well that's where some of these additional features in TP can help you work that out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to skip across here, you'll see the little page indicator there shows you that we have um, multiple pages. Uh, of data that you can swipe across to um, depending on what you're looking to investigate. So I'm currently on the twilight page, this gives you civical, civil nautical and astronomical twilight times and you can just about see the directions there shown in the pale orange lines on, on the map. Um, that shows you where the brightest part of the sky would be at that uh, particular point in time for the phase of twilight. I swipe across again and rather than having some You'll see, uh, let me go back, you see the date control buttons there, it's today, tomorrow, yesterday, next moon phase, previous moon phase. That changes into a time slider and as I move that time slider you see those thin lines, blue and orange, showing you the position of the sun or the moon um, above the ground in terms of the direction. As I swipe back and forth. And you can go to a specific time, I tap the time, I go to 140 instead of 240, goes to 140, and you've got fine and coarse control down here. You can toggle that between 24 hours and one hour, and one hour you've got much finer control of the of the time if you're looking to get a very precise alignment against time of day. The next page is the one that we're interested in to answer this question that I posed earlier of whether the sunrise could potentially be blocked by these hills to east north east of our um, shooting location. And to do that you'll see here there is another pin has appeared and the icon down here, red to grey pin, gives you a clue as to what this is going to tell you. If I pick up that pin and I drop it to more or less on, there we are, on the sunrise line, what has happened Zoom in a little bit so you can see where that sits. There we go. What's what we have done before down below here is um, uh, a number of calculations that have been done. We've got a distance measure, and that's four miles between the pins. We've got the bearing um, from red to grey, seventy five point three degrees. We've got the difference in elevation of thirteen hundred feet, and that's minus thirteen hundred feet. I if you were to go from red to grey pin, you'd be descending 1300 feet. The real number that we care about is here, this um, minus 3.2 next to the little theodolite icon. And that says that the angle of elevation from red to grey is negative. So you're looking slightly down relative to the natural horizon. If I move the slider here to um, bring it towards sunrise time, what we can then do, there we are, we're pretty much there a little bit before sunrise, you can see by the negative 1.1 so I'll move that along a little bit there we are and there's the line of sunrise, there's the grey pin you can see that after the sun has risen the uh, apparent altitude is always going to be positive um, point, plus 0.4 degrees and the thing that tells us that the shot is clear and that these mountains over here in the west will receive direct light at sun, sunrise is the minus 3.2 degrees 
and that tells you that indeed um, you're looking down from there to there so the sun can't be blocked by these mountains here. So an interesting question, just to take this a little bit further, is what happens, how, how much of the foreground of our shot, so the, the lower slopes of the hills are indeed the end of the valley here, could be lit at 6.26 in the morning. If I pick up the red pin and drop it down in the valley floor here, you'll see, I'm a little bit too far north there, let's try that once again. There we go. Now we have an angle of plus 3.6 degrees. That means that if you were stood there on the valley floor and you looked up towards this notional grey pin on the hills, you'd be looking up at th by 3.6 degrees. The sun is only up at point plus 0.5 degree, which means that the light can't reach down to the valley floor at 626. If we advance the time, as the sun rises, and I'll just toggle to give myself another hour or so. Um, there we go. Sun's at 3.8, the difference is 3.6, so it's not until about half an hour after sunrise that you will get light down at this part of the, f of the valley floor. Now I say that, and that's not necessarily strictly true, because the sun is moving round, it's moving to the south as the day goes on, but we can double check that very quickly as well. I pick up the pin again, I drop it here on top of the hills, 2.8 degrees. So, we're, we're good. We could get it a little bit earlier than 6.50. We'll just back that off. There we go. 2.3 degrees, let's say. So, it's about 6.46. Only five minutes difference. So, this lets you really use the... The Gropian lets you investigate the terrain. It lets you double-check the timing of when you can expect to get the direct light of the sun um, or potentially the moon on an object in the landscape. So, a few last things before we finish up this, this walkthrough. We have one more page, which we haven't really talked about, which is uh, the Horizon page, and that lets you determine um, how far you can see to the horizon, and in addition it will adjust the times of sunrise, sunset, moonrise, moonset um, for your elevation above the horizon. As you can imagine, the higher you go, the farther you can see, and the farther you can see, the earlier you'll, you'll see the sunrise, um, just like you when you're on a, a flight. Um, before we finish, I'll show you just how to save the location. So we've got our pin located here at the um, the west end of Great Langdale. Let's say we want to save that for future use. Come to the menu. We click Add. Um, we can give this a name. Um, so I'll just type that in. Great Langdale. Oops. Let's try that once more. There we are. Click Add. That's now saved. If I want to go there, I go Locations. You can see it's saved there. Let's go to a different one. Timbuktu is um, always installed as the default location. Um, little slightly tongue in cheek, but let's uh, go there. Timbuktu in Mali, Africa. And uh, we want to go back to Great Langdale. We go to Locations, Great Langdale. There it is. And uh, I keep wanting to double tap this map, but uh, you can pinch or press, pinch and zoom or press the buttons. Um, anyway, hopefully that has given you a pretty good introduction to what you can do with TPE. Um, you've seen how to move the pins to recenter, you can go to current location, use these pages, uh, use the buttons across the bottom to affect your date, and then start to use some of the more advanced tools such as the details. Um, slider and the geodetics panel. Um, Horizon, we'll come back to you probably another time. Thanks for your time.